Hey guys, this is James here from eBay's Guitar and today I'm going to take apart Dreams by Fleetwood Mac as part of my Quick Start Song Builder series. I'm also going to show you a device called the Four Note Fill Creator so that you can start improvising your own fills and bass lines. If this interests you, please do check this lesson out right to the end. So today guys, I'm going to take apart Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. This is from an album called Rumours, which probably is one of the most seminal albums in rock and roll history. So if you don't know it, please do go and check it out. There's just simply amazing songs on there. But Today, Dreams, this is one of these songs which just goes to show that music doesn't have to be complicated to be amazing. And the reason I've chosen this is because it's a really, really simple, straightforward song to get going. So if you're in the early part of your bass playing career and you just want to get out there, rock out and actually play along with an amazing song, an amazing track, do check this lesson out because you'll get so much from it. I'm also going to show you some devices so that you can break out and start creating your own fills. Often students... Um, they, get, um, they can get a little bit confused. Um, there's so many possibilities when it comes to creating fills. Where do I place them? What notes should I choose? And so I'm gonna give you some frameworks um, that you can use to start essentially creating your own fills. So let's talk about this uh, song first of all. Effectively, they're two chords all the way through. Um, two key notes for us bass players to, uh, to go, to, to play. Um, that is an F and that is a G. And this F and G runs through the whole piece from beginning to end. And I can remember gigging this song for the first time about a year ago, and uh, the guy who's running the band said, oh, there's no music for this. And I was like, well, what's in the song? And he said, it's just F and G all the way through. And, and I, he then also told me it's just a straight rock and roll, kind of pop, pop rock feel. And that was enough information uh, to for me to kind of get stuck in and know exactly what I needed to do. So let's first of all take this apart. Uh, it is literally, grab a pen, it is literally a bar of F and a bar of G all the way through. So for us bass playing, or a measure if you're in America. So we're just gonna do, this is all that we need to know to play the song, like so, from the notes. And we can grab the F at the first fret, and grab the G at the third fret on the E string. Uh, next, we need to know what groove, what rhythm do we want to play over this. This is a straight uh, eighth note pop feel. Uh, it's really, really simple. I love this feeling. I love this feel, or and I love the feeling <laughs> which comes from it. Um, but I'm going to take apart how this feel works for you so you can understand it. This comes from a thing that I call uh, the groove matrix formula. It's a way of dividing up each bar and we can essentially start off with the largest note and then divide it down and just keep going into smaller divisions. So let me show you how this works. So if we go like this, I'm gonna change color again. Um, I'm gonna go in blue this time. So if this is our, if this is our bar like so, we have beats one, we have beats two, we have beats three, and we have beats four going on like that. Okay, so they are strong. So one, two, three, four, one, two, like so. Um, then what we can do is we can divide this down the middle. So these are quarter notes, so we're dividing the bar effectively into quarters. Then we can divide them into eighths like so. So we can go on these down the middle. So we can call these ands. So one and two and three and four and like so. So to get this rock fill, I'm just gonna play, uh, play a little bit of it so you can hear how it goes. Like that. So to get this, we are playing literally notes one, 
like so here. We're going to play notes four and, uh, sorry, two and. We're going to play notes three, and we're going to play, uh, we're going to play four and at the end there. So we're going to go dong, bum bum, ba bum. So to take that part, so one, two, and three, and four. Okay, <laughs> so one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three. So if I make a, a very obvious tapping a noise, so one, two, three, four. Okay, you might want to go all the way through another way that I think of this, which is useful. You might want to count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. And you are going on one, two, three, so one, two, three, four, so one, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five. That's another way that you can think of it, which I sometimes find quite helpful when I'm dividing rhythm up. So let's take this through. I've got a backing track here. Don't forget, you can download all the resources from this lesson. Um, there's a link below this post where you can get the PDF which goes with this lesson and this backing track. So don't forget to check that out and have some really have some fun and take this uh, and have some fun with this at home. So let's try it with the track so you can hear how this sounds like. Then we'll talk about how to create some f little fills over the top of it. That's literally all it is though, throughout the whole track. So that's literally all you need to do to play great bass over this particular song. You could play that literally from the first second all the way through right to the end and it will work absolutely brilliantly. However, we want to start adding some interest and some fills into this um, and that's what makes these bass parts really interesting and starts starts making them come to life. So I'm going to show you a little device uh, that I call the four note fill creator and this is a device that consists of four notes and so we take this groove here and what we're going to do is on bar four, we're going to add four notes in at the end here. So if you looked at the groove here, this groove grid, we can use, we'll be using these notes here. So three, three and, four and, four and. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the groove grid here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, notes three, three and, four and, four and to create our fill rhythmically. So where do we place this is your next question. What we're going to do is we're going to place it right at the end of bar four here. So we're going to have a four bar phrase and then we're going to place it here like so and we're going to place it across these four notes here like there. So right there. Okay. Um, not the neatest thing I've ever written, but I'm sure you get the idea. But with these, I want you to leave them exactly the same for the moment. Um, the reason being is it's really important to do a thing that I call balancing the groove. Uh, that's where we want to play just the right amount of notes. You will often hear uh, it said that some musicians are far too busy because the temptation is literally to fill across all of this, which doesn't sound cool. If you go back and listen to John McVie, uh, who's the bass player of Fleetwood Mac, he literally spends, I think, there's so so few sort of fill notes and variations so he starts getting busier as the track goes on it's very very sparse um, and then when you get towards the middle it start that's when he starts adding these little devices in which starts bringing things to life um, so the first one that i want to show you is here is i'm literally variation one and don't forget to check this out on the pdf music which comes with this lesson is i'm literally just going to play all g's and what it does is it adds a little bit of weight to the phrase so let's try it so one two three four okay and here And 
again. Okay, and that's what creates the definition and the sort of the balance to it. We want to make the end of the phrase, I guess, a little, a little bit heavier, a little, a few more notes on there. Um, because uh, naturally, when we play music, we tend to work in two bar phrases, four bar phrases, eight bar phrases. All of our phrases will have shape to them. So this is a great place to put that in. So the second variation of this is I'm going to uh, put what we call a chromatic note in there. This is, okay, or a passing note is another one to get us back from the G to the F, and I'm literally just gonna place it right on the end there. So let me play it so it's gonna be. Okay, chromatics for us bass players are really, really powerful because uh, in all honesty, you don't need huge knowledge of harmony in there to do that, um, as long as you end up on the right note kind of at the end of it. And when you're going from an F, G chord, F to a G, there's a huge, um, there's, there's, a, there's a, just a really brilliant chromatic right in the middle of it. So let me put this into context so you can hear it. I'll play it with a backing track in due course so you can hear it with the harmony and the song going on behind, but just by myself, we'll get one, two, three, four. Okay, so dum bum. Okay. And again. Okay, so that is that is the, putting the chromatic in there. I want to use the same idea, but rather using a chromatic, I want this time, so number three, check out the PDF, we're gonna go. Okay, so go, to go for more of a melodic idea. So let me play the G bar so you can hear how this goes. Okay, so that has more of a melodic uh, feel and it's more part of the the scale, the harmony which is going on in the song. But don't worry if you don't understand that stuff so much. Just try it and so you can hear the sound of it in your head. So let's put it in context uh, and you can hear uh, what uh, example number three sounds like. So one, two, uh, one, two, three, four. Again. Okay, so that is adding like a scale note in there. Uh, so literally a whole step or a tone up from the G. So the next one I, I wanna put in is variation number three. And we're gonna use the next kind of uh, most powerful note that we can put in there and that is our octave. So when we're on the G, we can literally use our L shape, our box shape, to grab the G octave up there, like so. And what we're gonna do is on these last four notes is we're just gonna do octaves. So root, octave, root, octave, like so. So to put that in context so you can hear how this goes. And hear it again. Hear the octaves coming up again. Okay, so that is using octaves. And then for the last variation on this, we're going to use root, we're going to use the fifth, we're going to use the octave, and back to the fifth again. This is kind of like a real sort of Motown James Jameson idea. Okay, you should use that, you've probably heard that sound a bunch of times if you listen to those sort of, that sort of music. So, but it works great in here, so we can end up with this sort of idea, so. Okay, so let me put that in context and you can hear how that sounds. Coming up to bar four. Coming up again, and a little bit more movement. Okay, so you can start to hear how we can get a little bit more weight, a little bit more movement at the end of the phrase, but still 
keep the groove kind of intact because the most important thing that makes the song from a bass point of view is dunk, gong, 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 all the way through. Um, but we want to put a little bit of spice, a little bit of variety in there to keep things interesting um, because that's kind of what makes the music human at the end of the day uh, rather than a kind of a machine doing it. Um, the other thing to listen to in the song is to listen uh, to Mick Fleetwood's kick drum as well. In this instance, a lot of the way through, he's literally just playing on one and three and the bass is uh, doing two uh, is doing the ands. That's cool, that kind of works. Um, oh, it does work, it works brilliantly. Um, but the other thing that may happen is the dr drummer may follow that kick drum pattern too. So the bass and the drums are often playing the same pattern uh, there. So, but in this instance, we the bass is kind of playing a little bit off the kick drum, but it works brilliantly. Um, so let's put this in the context of the, uh, with the backing track, uh, and then you can hear how this sounds. Okay, I'm going to just play the one where we st variation, sticking on variation one. Okay. Okay, let's put the what variation two with the chromatic in it. Variation three coming up with the scale notes. And again. Okay, we're gonna do the one with the octave, variation four. Okay, let's do the variation five with the root and fifth and the octave. Hey guys, next steps is do grab the PDF download and the backing track and have a really good play along with this, but even better, download or just get hold of the original track of this and listen to the rhythm section, Mick Fleetwood on the drums and John McVie on the bass and listen to when John McVie starts adding uh, the variation into it. It's quite a long way into the track actually. Um, so this is a really great example of how real simple sparse bass playing can make a great song. So do go away and check that out. Also, if you've got questions or you've got any comments, please do comment below. Please do give it a like and share on social. Once again, I've been James from eBass Guitar and I will see you next time. Cheers for now, bye bye.